وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The lecture inshallah ta'ala today is going to be about Laylatul Qadr That's inshallah ta'ala the topic that I will be speaking about inshallah ta'ala The way that I plan to tackle this topic is in 10 different steps I'm at 10 points inshallah ta'ala the first point is مفهوم ليلة القدر what does ليلة القدر mean what's the definition of it linguistically and technically I'm going to define both so I'm going to linguistically define it and I'm technically also going to define it inshallah ta'ala the second بإذن الله الكريم point is Laylatul Qadr Has it come to an end? When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said Farufi'at It was uplifted Does it mean that Laylatul Qadr is over? Or does it mean something else? Has it ended? At the time of the Prophet? Or is it something that's going to carry on Until the Day of Judgment? The third point inshallah ta'ala is Laylatul Qadr Is in the month of Ramadan we're going to establish and prove that Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan, not in any other month. Number four, Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. We're going to establish and prove that Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Point number five, inshallah ta'ala, is Laylatul Qadr it moves within those 10 days. It's not restricted to a particular day. It moves within those 10 days. It could sometimes be this month, sometimes it could be, sorry, sometimes it could be this day, or sometimes it could be that day, within the 10 days, within the last 10 days of Ramadan. The sixth point, inshallah ta'ala, is alamatu Laylatul Qadr, the signs of Laylatul Qadr. Number seven is Dua Ilayla Qadr, supplication at this particular night. And what should one say? And what should one come with? Number eight, Khasa'is and Fada'il Laylat al Qadr, virtues and rewards that have come regarding Laylat al Qadr. <coughs> Number nine, Kitmanu Laylatul Qadr, hiding Laylatul Qadr, if you've reached it, if you've seen it, if you felt that you caught it, conceal it and don't tell no one. Number 10, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be su'al and jawab, question and answers inshallah ta'ala. That you guys will be able to ask any questions that you want, and inshallah ta'ala, whichever of those questions I have the knowledge and the ability to answer, I will inshallah ta'ala answer. Let's start with the first point, which is Laylatul Qadr. What is the understanding? What does it mean? As you can see, Laylatul Qadr is a component of how many words? Two words, Layla and Al Qadr. And the Qaeda is the principle is, according to the scholars, Wal Mufradul Muda, Wal Mufradul Mudafu in Tarakaba, Maghairi, Hatta Atama Lakaba. فَحَدُّهُ يَكُونُ بِالْإِفْرَادِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ لَدَى النُّقَادِ ثُمَّ يُعَادُ ثَانِيًا مُرَكَّبًا إِذْ لَقَبَ الَّذِيهِمُ تَرَكَّبًا If something is compounded of two things, we will have to define each one individually. So we would have to define Layla, and then we would have to define Al-Qadr, and then we will mention what they both mean together. And it's very important that you understand the definition of things before you go forward in what? Before you go forward in trying to understand the virtues that have come regarding it and its rulings. Because the scholars, they say 
to place a ruling on a matter, to place a ruling on a matter, will only come when your perception is right, when you've correctly perceived it. <coughs> so, what does Layla mean? In the Arabic language, the word Layla it means min wurub al-shamsi when the sun sets ila turu' al-fajr al-thani to the what? To the correct time of Salat al-Fajr. So it's when the sun sets, Maghrib time, until Fajr, that's called Layla, night. And that's the linguistic usage of the word Layla, it's night. And the istilahi meaning, meaning the Sharia, it hasn't changed it. It has used exactly the linguistic meaning. It borrowed the linguistic meaning and it has used it. So it means the same thing in what? According to the Sharia. Now we move on to the second term, which is Al-Qadr. What does Al-Qadr mean? The scholars, they mention three meanings. We will only take the two correct opinions, inshaAllah ta'ala. The first one is Al-Qadr means Laylatul Qadr. Al-Qadr means Al-Sharaf wal-Waqar wal-Azama. It means honor, virtuous, majestic. That's what the word Al-Qadr means. And this is based on the ayah وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ they have not venerated, they've not glorified, they have not honored Allah the way He deserves to be honored. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ The word that's used here is what? حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ So the Qadr means what? Sharaf. They did not honor Allah the way He deserves to be honored. And if you go to Surah Al-Qadr, you realize that that's the meaning that it's using. Because Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Laylatul al-Qadr khayrun min alf shahr Muhammad what do you know about Laylatul al-Qadr Laylatul al-Qadr khayrun it is better than a thousand months and then Allah is here what is he doing he's honoring he's venerating the night of Laylatul al-Qadr by saying wa ma adraka what do you know about it this istifham this interrogation this questioning it's because Allah is trying to show that it's not a light matter so he's honoring it you know, that's the first meaning that it holds. And to show that that's another meaning that it has is in the hadith, in Sahihain, in hadith Abi Huraira, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Anyone who stands, أَمَا مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ Anyone who stands, sorry, the night of Laylatul Qadr, Iman, belief of Allah, and ihtisab, he hopes reward from Allah. His sins will be forgiven for him. Pay attention here now. The hadith mentions that if you stand that night and you pray, what will happen? Your past, your sins that you've done will be forgiven for you. This is honoring this night. And then the first meaning that it has is what? A sharaf. That this night has got virtue. That's the first meaning. The second meaning that it has is and Allah yaqdiru fiha. Allah destines inside this night ahkamu tilka sana. The things that are going to take place the year. It's a yearly qadr. There are scholars mention there is how many qadr? There are qadr which is shamil. Every single one of us, before we got created, thousands of years, Allah ta'ala wrote. That which is going to take place. This is the Qadr which is Shamil. There's a second type of Qadr, which is the one Allah took a covenant with us. When Allah took a covenant with us, the children of who? Dhurriyati Adam, the lineage of Adam. Allah says to them, Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala shahidina an taqulu yawm al qiyamati inna kunna an hadha ghafilin. We all took a covenant with Allah, a promise. This is the second type. The third type is the one in Sahih Hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. In Ahadakum Yujma Khalku fi Batni Ummi Arbaina Yoman Nutfa, Tomeyakunu Alakam Alakata Mithaladarik, Tomeyakunu Mudra Tamithaladarik, Tomeyur Salu Ilahi Malak, 
فينفق فيه الروح ويؤمر باربع كلمات بكتب رزقه واجله وعمله شقي او سعيد this hadith mentions when you're in the mother in the womb of your mother another qadr was being written for you there's the yearly one now the yearly one is with this one as Allah mentioned in the Quran, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah, Inna kunna munzilin, Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. That night, Laylatul Qadr, is the yearly one. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He destines that whole year was going to take place. And there's another one which is the yearly one. There's a year, daily, sorry, daily one. The next one is daily. There's a Qadr, happens daily. Allah says in the Quran, Kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'n. Kulla yawmin, every day, Huwa fi sha'n is another affair. There are people Allah is forgiven that day. There are people whose necks have been freed from the hellfire. Are we together, brothers? So every day there's also a qadr. Laylatul qadr is the yearly one. So this is the second meaning that it has, which is what? That that day, the reason why it's called al qadr is because Allah destines the yearly qadr. The yearly things that are going to take place. That's the second meaning. And those two qawl that I mentioned, are the two strongest qawl. There's a third qawl that some of the scholars mention, um, which they say it means at tadiq tightening. It, they said the reason why it's called tightening is because the angels descend that night. And when they descend, they descend in large numbers. And so the earth becomes very tight for them. It can't carry them. They're too much. And they use the ayah that Allah wa Taala says, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ the angels descend and Jibreel also descends. So they say the angels are coming down that night, the earth is tight. That view is the weakest of the two. The first two are strong. And those two views that I mentioned, two great noble scholars mentioned it. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala and Ibn Qudama. Ibn Hajar mentions it in Fathul Bari and Ibn Qudama mentions it in Izzal Mughni, which is the Sharah of Muqtasar al Khiraqi. Now we've understood what Laylatul Qadr means linguistically. We know what Layla means. We know what Al-Qadr means. What do they both mean together now? What do they both mean together? They both mean together, when we bring it together and we make it one word, Laylatul Qadr, it means Al-Layla, Laylatul Qadr, Layla Mubaraka. It's the blessed night. Min layali al-ashri al-akhirah, min layali al-ashri al-akhir, from the last 10 days of Ramadan. Allah sent this particular night, He sent down فيها القرآن العظيم, the book of Allah. The Quran was sent down this night. And in this night, يفصل Allah تبارك وتعالى judges and He destines the yearly things that are going to take place. سبحانه وتعالى That night is better than a thousand nights. That's the definition of Laylatul Qadr. It's better than how many? A thousand nights. A thousand nights is equivalent to 83, sorry, 84, um, 83 and four months. It's equivalent to 83 years and four months. If a person just reaches Laylatul Qadr, that's as though he stood up for 83 nights and four months. When we speak about its virtue, we'll tackle that more inshallah ta'ala. The second point now inshallah ta'ala. Which is Laylatul Qadr is going to remain until the Day of Judgment. Some of the scholars, they thought that Laylatul Qadr ended. Some scholars mentioned that. And the reason why that mistake came to them was from the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih in Hadith Ubadat ibn Samit. Bukhari narrated this on the authority of who? Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Ubadah said, Kharaj al Nabi, the messenger came out. He came out sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liyukhbirana so he can inform us bi laylatul qadr. The messenger came out to inform us of laylatul qadr. Fatalaha fulanun wa fulanun. A quarrel took place between two individuals. Fakala min al muslimin Two Muslims, they quarreled. Fakala Rasulullah, the messenger then said, Kharajtu, I came out liukhbirakum bi laylatul qadr. I came out to inform you about the laylatul qadr. Fatalaha fulanun wa fulan. So and so, and so and so, they quarreled. Farufi'at, it was lifted. Point, this is the point that the scholars, this dispute came from. Was Laylatul Qadr in its totality uplifted? That it no longer live, exists? Or is the Ta'yeenu Laylatul Qadr, the specification of Laylatul Qadr, 
and that Laylatul Qadr is going to take place on this particular night, is that what's lifted? Are we all together, brothers? Pay attention here. The hadith says, it was uplifted. What was uplifted? The Laylatul Qadr in totality? Or what was uplifted was the specification of Laylatul Qadr being at this particular night. The strongest is that it means the specifying of Laylatul Qadr to a particular night that has been uplifted from the Prophet's mind. He doesn't know what night is going to be from the last 10 nights. He doesn't, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Like Laylatul Qadr will remain. It does exist. It will exist until the day of judgment. And what's the evidence for that? The evidence is for that, number one, the hadith itself. The hadith itself is evidence. Why? Because the Prophet said, وَعَسَىٰ أَن يَكُونَ خَيْرًا لَكُمْ It is possible that there is good in it for you. فَالْتَمِسُوهَا Look for it. فِي التَّاسِعَةِ وَالسَّابِعَةِ وَالْخَامِسَةِ Look for in the 29th, the 27th and the 25th. And if it's gone, the Messenger would not have said, number one, it's good for you. Because if it's, it, won't be, it won't be good for us if we miss this great virtuous night. Second, is he would not say to them, look for it. The fact that he said, فَالْتَبِسُوهَا Look for it, is an indication to show that what has been uplifted is the particular night in which Laylatul Qadr is. That which we don't know. And, and Imam Ibn Mulaqqin, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Al-I'lam bi fawaid Umdati Al-Hakam, he transmitted an ijma' that Laylatul Qadr is going to remain. He said, أَجْمَعَ مَنْ يُعْتَدُّ, من يعتد بِهِ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَىٰ دَوَامِ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الدَّهَرِ Ibn Al-Mulaqin said, it is by consent, anyone whose ijma', anyone whose words is taken into consideration, I mean any scholar whose speech is given weight, they've all unanimously agreed. We're not talking about those who have no value, no, they're not they're pseudo-scholars. We're talking about men yu'taddu bihi, those which we hold on to, the great Imams. All of those Imams unanimously agreed that Laylatul Qadr will remain ila akhir al-dahr until the Day of Judgment. That it will never come to an end. That it will never come to an end. Now we move on to the third point, point inshaAllah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr is where? It's in Ramadan. It's not in any other months of the year. What's the evidence for that? We have to bring two ayahs together to prove that. Allah told us, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ It was in the month of Ramadan, Allah sent down the Qur'an. If we take that ayah, فَإِذَا ضُمَّتْ الْآيَةَانِ If we bring the two ayahs together, what are the two ayahs? شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ Which month was, was the Qur'an sent down? The month of Ramadan. In which particular night? Allah says, إِنَّا أَنزَلَّهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ so Laylatul Qadr is the night which the Qur'an came down. And the month that it came down, Allah already told us, which is what? Shahr Ramadan. What does that prove to us? That Laylatul Qadr is part of what? Shahr Ramadan. Does that make sense to everyone? The Qur'an came down, Allah told us, in which month? The month of Ramadan. And Allah also told us that the Qur'an was sent down on a particular night, which was what? Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is a night part of what? Ramadan. Are we all together, brothers? That two ayahs, ayah, فَإِذَا ضُمَّتِ الْآيَتَانِ If we bring the two ayahs together, بَعْضُهُمَا إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ We bring them both together, then we will realize from that, بِيَقِينِ لَا شَكَّ فِي Certainty with no doubt, that Laylatul Qadr is what? فِي شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ is in the month of Ramadan. Also the Prophet clearly said it. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He said in the hadith al-Imam al-Nasai narrated in his sunan. Ama al-Imam al-Nasai, ama al-Imam al-Nasawi. You can say it in those three ways. He narrated in his sunan al-Ahmad rahimahullah in his musnad. In hadith Abi Hurairah, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he said, Atakum Ramadan, the month of Ramadan has come to you. Shahrun Mubarak is a blessed month. Faradallahu alaykum siyamah. Allah has made obligatory on you its fasting. The doors of the sama is open. Ahmed's wording is different. The wording of Imam Ahmed is Jannah. The doors of Jannah are open, not the doors of the sama. Nasa'i's wording is the door of the sama. Lakin Ahmed's wording is what? Rahimahullah. 
that the doors of Jannah are open. And the doors, this is the Sa'i's wordings. Jahib, which is Nar, the doors of the hellfire are closed. And the shayateen, the stubborn, hard-headed, aimed, uh, uh, shayateen devils are chained. Lillahi fihi, Allah has in this month, Laylatun, a night, a lillahi fihi, a fi shahar Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, Allah has a night. And then this night that we're going to speak about is in which month? It's in Ramadan. The Prophet saying this. Laylatun khayru min alfi shahrin. A month better than a thousand, a thousand months. One night, sorry, that's better than a thousand months. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. And anyone who misses out that night, Laylatul Qadr, then that person has lost everything. If you don't get hold of Laylatul Qadr, and you miss out and you're prevented from it, then wallahi, you, what else can you receive in this world? If you've truly missed that night, you have lost everything, wallahi. There's nothing to live for after that. A night that's equivalent to how long, brothers? 83 years and four months. 83 years and four months precisely. Not including Laylatul Qadr, by the way. When, it's, when we say 83 years and four months, we don't mean Laylatul Qadr is in it. Meaning the, uh, the next year of Laylatul Qadr is not in it. So this is why. Now we're going to move on to the fourth point. Laylatul Qadr, brothers, is in what? Fil Ashr al Awakhir min Ramadan. It's not just in Ramadan, but it's in what? The last ten nights of Ramadan. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Qalat, Qala Rasulullah, she said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taharru Laylatul Qadr, strive. Work hard for the night of Laylatul Qadr. Fil Ashri al Awakhri bin Ramadan. Strive. Exert effort. Put your hard work in Laylatul Qadr this night. Fil Ashri al Awakhri bin Ramadan. It is in what? It's in the last ten nights of Ramadan. Wa fi riwayat al Bukhari. And Imam al Bukhari wording is different. He said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yujawiru. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one who would do mujawara. Mujawara, what does it mean? It means i'tikaf. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do i'tikaf fil ashri al awakhiri min Ramadan in the last ten nights of Ramadan. Wayakulu he would say, Taharru Laylatul Qadri fil ashri al awakhiri min Ramadan. Look for Laylatul Qadri in what? In the last ten nights of Ramadan. He would say that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa fi riwayat al-Bukhari, iltamisu. Look for, strive to find it. So why would the messenger do itikaf the last 10 nights of Ramadan? Because Laylatul Qadr is in it. And also the hadith benefits a second thing which is, the messenger said, taharru Laylatul Qadr fil ashri al-awakhir. Look for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Uritu Laylatul Qadri, I was shown the Laylatul Qadr in my dream. Thumma aiqadhani ahlihi. Thumma aiqadhani ba'du ahli. Some of my family woke me up. The Prophet said this. Fanusituha. I was made to forget it. Forget it. Harmal ibn Yahya, who is Ahad al Ruat al Hadith, he narrated it slightly different. He didn't narrate it as Fanusituha. He narrated with the dubbed of. Fanasituha. I forgot it. And the other wording is what? Fanusituha. I was made to forget it. Faltamisuha fil ashil gawabiri. Look for it in the last ten nights. The hadith says, Faltamisuha. Look for it. Fil ashil gawabiri. Look for it in the what? The last ten nights. Aisha also said in the hadith Sahih Muslim, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yajtaydu fil ashil awakhir. That the messenger, he used to work hard. He used to exert effort. In the last 10 nights of Ramadan, that which he would not exert in any other time in the year. And in any other time in the, in the month itself, he would work hardest in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَجْتَهِدُ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مَا لَا يَجْتَهِدُ فِي غَيْرِهِ The fact that the Prophet will work hard and exert more effort 
in the last 10 nights of Ramadan is an indication that these last 10 nights are what brothers? Laylatul Qadri is in these last 10 nights. Finally, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith is narrated, the hadith which is mutafaqun alayhi, he said, she said radiallahu ta'ala anha, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ida dakhala al-ashr al-awakhir, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, ida dakhala al-ashr, ay ashr al-awakhir min Ramadan, if the last 10 nights of Ramadan entered, ahya al-layla, he would revive the night, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would wake up his family. Another riwayah says, وَاجْتَهَدَ He would exert effort. وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرَ أَمَا وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tie his waist. And the وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرَ Ibn Hajar and others, they mention it means that is a kinayatun عَنِ ibtiadi عَنِ عَنِ النِّسَا أَمَا اِعْتِزَالُ النِّسَا It's a kinaya that he would boycott his wives and he would stay away from them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have no sexual relationship with his wives. And another wording is that he used to do what? Ijtihad. And he used to exert more effort. That's what it means. Shadd al is when you go to the gym and you want to work out, you want to pick up a lot of machines. What do you do? Huh? And the machine, the weights are big. What do you do? You wear it, huh? Ah, you put that on. This is also, it means that when the person exerts efforts. So this is what the hadith means. Point number five, inshallah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadr, as we mentioned before, Mutanaqila. The Laylatul Qadr, within those ten nights, it moves around. It doesn't, it's not specific on any particular night, it moves around. It can sometimes be the 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and if that month has to, it, can, it moves from those ten nights. So last year it could have been the 27th, that doesn't necessarily mean that this year it's going to be the 27th. It moves. And this is the qawl that Imam al-Nawiyu mentions. He says, وَأَجْمَعَ مَنْ يُعْتَدُ بِهَا عَلَى وُجُودِهَا وَدَوَامِهَا إِلَىٰ آخِرِ دَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحَةِ الْمَشْهُورَةِ قَالَ الْقَاضِي وَاخْتَلَفُ فِي لَيْلَةَ أُخْرَىٰ وَهَكَذَا وَبِهَذَا يَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ الْأَحَدِيثِ وَيُقَالُ كُلُّ حَدِيثِ جَاءَ بِأَحَدِ أَوْقَاتِهَا وَلَا تَعَارُضَ فِيهَا قَالَ وَنَحْوُ هَذَا قَوْلُ مَالِكِ وَالثَّوْرِ وَأَحْمَدُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَأَبُو ثَوْرٍ وَغَيْرِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا تَنْقُلُ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانٍ this qawl, he attributed it to who? Al-Imam Nawawi rahimahullah. He said, this is the view of Malik and Thawri and Ahmed and Ishaq and Abu Thawr and other than them. They all believed that it moves within those last 10 nights. And that's the strongest and the most accurate view. The reason is because there are many ahadiths that have come. Each and every one of them specifying a night in the last 10 nights. Some narrations said the 21st, some said 24, some said 30. Uh, sorry, 27th. Some say 29th. There's 40 views in this issue. 40 qawl Ibn Ajal brings in Fathul Bari. The only way that you can bring all of those views together and all of the ahadith together and bring them together is to say that it's in Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan, and it moves. It's not at a spe specific night. That it moves. So that makes us brothers what? Work hard. Until the last day of the pronunciation of Eid. We don't give up. Our efforts and our hard work is through the whole last 10 nights. Because we could, it could be any of those nights. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made signs for Laylatul Qadr. We may not know it, but there are signs to see that it came and it happened. This moves us to the sixth, sixth point, inshallah ta'ala, from the 10 points that we said we're going to go through. Alamatu Laylatul Qadr. The signs of Laylatul Qadr. Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ubay ibn Ka'bin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentions the alama of Laylatul Qadr. When he was asked, Bi ayy shay'in yu'rafu Laylatul Qadr. Somebody asked him and they said to him, how would we know that what, we, what happened last night was Laylatul Qadr? How are we going to know? He said, Bil alama, there are signs. Or bil ayah, there are indications and there are signs. Alati akhbarana Rasulullah which the Prophet told us about. And what's the sign? أَنَّهَا تَطْلُعُ يَوْمَ إِذِ اللَّهِ شُعَاءَ لَهَا That day, Laylatul Qadr is day, the sun will rise, لا شُعَاءَ لَهَا with no ray. The sun doesn't have no ray in it. That's the sign that the Messenger ﷺ told us. Abu Dawood's wording, it says, يَا أَبَا الْمُنْذِرِ 
anna alim tadalik abdul as you know ubay that night that day that year ubay he swore by allah he said wallahi ubay swore wallahi i know that it was tonight laylatul qadr is on the 27th so they asked ubay how do you know it was how do you know it was the 27th he said there were signs that the Prophet told us that we can, we, I recognize that it was Laylatul Qadr. Faqila li Zir, Zir ibn Hubaysh, who was another companion, was then asked, okay, this, Abu Mundir, what was the signs that he mentioned? What were the signs that the Prophet told you all? And he added extra signs. Ubay mentioned the signs, and Zir ibn Hubaysh, another companion, he told other signs. He says, Susbihu shams sabihata tilka layla, mithla tasdilla shu'a la hatta tartafi'a. He said that the following morning of that particular night is like مثل tasti, like a vessel of water in it. لا شعاء لها It has no rays حتى ترتفع until the sun fully rises. Tirmidhi says أخبرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنها ليلة صبيحتها تطلع الشمس ليس لها شعاء It's going to be, the Prophet told us, that it's a night the following morning, the sun will rise. Laysa laha shu'a. There is no what? The, the sun doesn't have no ray whatsoever. And other, other characteristics that I, I chose to leave is that the earth is going to be sakina and al-waqar. And that is mentioned by the hadith of Ubadat ibn Samit in Imam Ahmed's Musnad. Point number seven, inshallah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadri. The night of Laylatul Qadr. What should the supplication of a person be? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asked this question on our behalf already. Qalat, she said, Qultu ya Rasulallah, I said to the Messenger of Allah, Araita in alim tu ayyu laylatin laylatul qadri. O Messenger of Allah, if I come to know which night of laylatul qadr it is, ma aqulu fiha, what shall I say in that night? Qala, the Prophet said to her, Quli say, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Say that. Oh Allah, you are one who forgives and you are generous. Tuhibbul afwa, and you love to forgive, fa'fu anni, forgive me. And Imam Tirmidhi narrated, and this is authentic. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma min da'watin yad'u biha al-abd, that there is no supplication, that a slave supplicates with, asks Allah tabarak wa ta'ala afdal, more greater than saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-mu'afat. Allah, oh Allah, I ask you to forgive me. Fi dunya wal akhirah, in this world and the hereafter. The scholars, they differed on its authenticity. This hadith is Sunan ibn Majah. Like what raji'u, tasheehu. What is authentic, the hadith is sahih. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, hina qubidha al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prophet was taken away, Meaning when the Prophet passed away, قام رسول الله, he, he, uh, Abu Bakr stood up from the, amongst the people and then he said, قام رسول الله, the messenger stood up. في موق, في مقامي هذا, this place that I am standing, once upon a time he said the Prophet stood exactly here. عام الأول, and he said that the Prophet stood like this in this position once upon a time in the first year. ثم بكى Abu Bakr, and then Abu Bakr cried greatly. ثُمَّ قَالَ Then he said, Abu Bakr, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالصِّدْقِ Upon you is to be truthful people. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَلْبِرْ Truthfulness is with righteousness. وَهُمَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ And both of those, truthfulness and righteousness, are the path to Jannah. وَإِيَّاكُمْ الْكَذِبِ Stay away from lying. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَلْ فُجُورِ Because lying is with transgression. وَهُمَا فِي النَّارِ And both of those are in the hellfire. وَسَلُوا اللَّهَ الْمُعَافَاتِ And ask Allah to forgive you. In this world and the hereafter, فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يُؤْتَ أَحَدٌ بَعْدَ الْيَقِينِ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْمُعَافَاتِ For verily, no one has been given after certainty better than mu'afat. That Allah forgives you and cares for you and protects you from any harm, worldly harm and He protects you from the hellfire. So this word, إِنَّكَ عَفُوٌ تُحِبُّ الْعَفْوَ فَعْفُ عَنِّي is something you should increase in saying. And this night, brothers, it's from the nights in which the dua are accepted. It's from the nights when what? The dua is accepted. Also, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
he came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked the Prophet of Allah, he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alimni shay'an, uh, teach me something. As'alullah which I can ask Allah. Teach me something which I can ask Allah. And this, they said that Abbas kept, kept, kept coming to the Prophet so much and he kept saying to him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, tell me something I can ask Allah. Teach me a dua. Faqala, the messenger said, Ya Abbasu, the messenger said, O oh, Abbas, Ya Amma Rasulillahi, the uncle of the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Afiyata fi dunya wal akhirah. Ask Allah, Afiyah, meaning that Allah forgives you, that Allah protects you from the hellfire, and that Allah protects you from worldly harm. Ask, Sallallahu Alaihi Afiyata fi dunya wal akhirah. Ask Allah this. And then this night is what you need to increase in asking Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Increase in asking Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala al afiyah Point number eight, inshaAllah Ta'ala, is Khasa'is wa fada'ilu Laylatul Qadr. The virtues that are connected to Laylatul Qadr. We're going to mention some of them. The first virtue is that the Quran was sent down this night. Number one, is that the, this night the Quran was sent down? Allah said in the Quran, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadri." In another ayah, Allah says, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil mubaraka." So the Quran was sent down this night. The first virtue is the kalam of Allah was sent down. Number two, Allah referred to laylatul qadr as a night which has baraka, blessed night. Allah says in, an, in the ayah, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil mubaraka." We send down the Quran in a night which was Mubarak, full of blessings. Number three is that this night is the night where the yearly Taqdeer Sanawi takes place. That whole year was going to take place for you is going to be written on that night. Allah said in the ayah, Inna anzalnahu fi laylati mubarakatin inna kunna munzilin fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim amran min indina inna kunna mursilin. This night is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He destines and He writes the yearly cycle for each and every one of us. What's going to happen for us that whole year? The, the fourth virtue of Laylatul Qadr is a night, the ibadah and the worship that you come with that night is what? Khayrun min alfi shahr is better than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadri, khayrun min alfi shahr. It is better than what? A thousand months. That's a virtue. Number five. And we said how much is a, a month? A, a thousand months? Eighty-three and what? Four months. Imagine you get, you catch two Laylatul Qadr. One Laylatul Qadr, brothers, is said to be more than what? It's more than the Umrul Ghalib. What is it more than, brothers? It's more than Umrul Ghalib. Ma ma'an Umrul Ghalib? It's more than the general person's lifespan. Because the Prophet said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِينَ وَسَبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ That my ummah will live between 60 to what? 70 and little will go over it. So majority, little go over 70. Just by one Laylatul Qadr, you're more than a general, ordinary person's lifespan. This is something that one should work hard towards. Also the fifth virtue is, Allah venerated this night. Allah glorified it. By how? By saying, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Allah said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this, I said to you, this istifham is what? It's tafkheem and ta'zeem min sha'ni laylat al-qadr. Allah is venerating, glorifying this night. He's doing tafkheem of it, making, making it a great night, that it's not something very little. Because the word Arabic, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ It's used when something is not light. Also, this night is a night Jibreel comes down. Jibreel, the greatest and the best angel will come down that particular night. He will come down. And Jibreel is not going to come down except with what? With khair. As Allah said in the ayah, Allah said in the ayah, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحِ The malaika are going to come down and our ruh, ruh is Jibreel. Jibreel was taken out of the angels for a particular reason because of his virtue and his greatness over the rest of the angels. Allah said that the angels are going to come down 
And then Jibreel is going to come down. As though Jibreel is not part of the angels. Because if Allah said that the angels are going to come down, then that would have been enough. We would have known Jibreel will come down as well. But no, Jibreel is not like the rest of the angels. So he can't just fall under the, under the category of what? Angels. He's got his own specific title, which is ar ruh Jibreel is going to come down this particular night. That's what Allah wa Taala told us. Also, Allah wa Taala, He said that that night there's peace. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. Peace. And the scholars they say that the peace that this night has is as salama tu fiha min al aqab. Allah is going to save you from what? Make you safe from His punishment. Subhanahu wa Taala. Ibn al Qayyim says that the aqoba here is the aqoba to dunya wa al ukrawi. The worldly punishment, you're going to be safe from it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allah is going to protect you from it. And Allah is going to also protect you from what, brothers? Allah is going to also protect you from the punishment of the hereafter. So, salamun hiya hatta matla il fajr. Also, the night of Laylatul Qadr, anyone who stands up that night with two characteristics, iman and ihtisab, all of his sins are forgiven. In the hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, in hadith Abi Huraira, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمِ مِنْ ذَنْبِ All of the sins that you've done and that you've accumulated that night, Allah will forgive it subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all the virtues, and some of the virtues of Laylatul Qadr. But there's a here waqfa that I want to do, a point that I need to stand over, which is Laylatul Qadr is the best of nights. There's no night like Laylatul Qadr. But how do we reconcile between that, when this, that and the statement of Allah, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ how do we reconcile between walayalin ashr in Surah Al Fajri that Allah swore by and walayalin ashr is according to the view of the scholars, which is all which is rajih, walayalin ashr is the 10 days of Dil Hijjah. The first 10 days of what? Dil Hijjah. So the question here that arises is Laylatul Qadri, or more like the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And these 10 nights of, what do you call it? Uh, uh, these days of Dil Hijjah, which one is better? The scholars, they said it's easy to reconcile between the two. They said that the last 10 nights of Ramadan is more virtuous, more virtuous and more greater than the first 10 nights of Dil Hijjah. But the first 10 days, days, not night, of Dil Hijjah is better than the first of the 10 days of the last days of Ramadan. So the days of the Hijjah is better than the days of the last 10 days of Ramadan. But the nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan is better than the nights of what? The Hijjah. Are we all together brothers? So that's how you understand that Laylatul Qadri is not at daytime, it's at nighttime. Why? Because Allah says, Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr Fajr when it comes in, Laylatul Qadr is gone. There's no such thing as Laylatul Qadr. So you need to benefit from Laylatul Qadr when? مَا بَيْنَ غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ الصَّادِقِ أَمْ الْفَجْرِ الثَّانِي huh? From when the sun sets, so, so when the sun, uh, sun sets, sorry, until the sun rises. Okay, brothers. Though that is what night means. Laylatul Qadr is called Layla, it's a night. So that whole night you have to revive it. You have to revive it. Now we're going to move on to the last point, inshallah ta'ala, which is the, ten, uh, the ninth point, is kitmanu laylatul qadri, hiding laylatul qadri. If one of you spent that last 10 nights of Ramadan working hard every single night, and then Allah showed you, Allah allowed you to see that last night was laylatul qadr, you saw it to be laylatul qadr. When you looked at the signs, it became clear to you, don't tell anyone about it. And don't inform every, anyone that what you did last night and the khayr that you came with, conceal it. Ibn Hajar mentions a very powerful benefit regarding that in his Fathul Bari. And he transmits it from Sahib Al-Hawi, the Kalam, that you should hide it. Because it's a karama, Allah honored you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the karama is something that when Allah honors you, you should hide it, keep it to yourself. Also he said it could be what? Min jihati annahu la ya'manu riya. You're not going to be safe from showing off. It can tamper with your intentions and that can then destroy what you did. Because two things can destroy an action. Showing off, which is a riya and a sum'ah, 
Both of them can destroy an action. And riya, what is it, brothers? When you're doing the action, you're showing off. You're doing it for somebody. Maybe you didn't do it. When you were doing it, you were doing it for Allah's sake. But the sum'ah can be a problem. What's the sum'ah? After you've done the action, you're telling the people about it. It can then go back to the action and destroy it. That's the difference between a riya and a sum'ah. Don't tell anyone about it. Not to mention, min jihatil adab. In terms of etiquette, Ibn Hajar says, you're going to be busy with something that you've done instead of focusing on what? Seeing deficiency in yourself. It will get rid of that. It will get rid of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ That the believers, when they come with righteous actions, they are always scared whether the action is accepted from them. The Prophet said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ They are the ones, يَخَافُونَ أَلَّا يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْهُمْ They are the ones who are scared that it won't be accepted from them. Are we all together, brothers? Also from the other angle, which is, مِن جِهَةِ أَنَّوْ لَا يَأْمَنُوا الْحَسَدِ Some people are going to be jealous of you, who couldn't get up that night and couldn't pray. And so when they get jealous of you, the evil eye will come to you, he says. And then he brings the ayah of إِسْتِئْنَاسًا مِنْ قِصَّةِ يَعْقُوبِ لِيُوسُفْ what did Yaqub say to his son Yusuf? He said to him, Ya Bunaya, la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatika, fayakidu laka kayda, inna shaytana lil insani aduwu mubin. The dream that you saw last night, don't tell your brothers about it. Your own flesh and blood brothers, don't tell them about it. Fayakidu laka kayda. They will plot against you, they will plan against you. And then the Prophet Allah said in the ayah, inna shaytana lil insani aduwu mubin. Shaytan is a clear enemy to you. So the people will jealous you. And they would want this to be taken, to be stripped from you. And the evil eye will then come to you. So she didn't tell anyone. Falafdal, Ibn Hajar says, Antaktuma wala tukhbira biha marraaha. The one who sees it should not be informing anyone else. Okay, brothers. Are you, are you with me? Not to mention, some people may not have seen it. And when, they, when you say, I saw it, they might jealous you and say, Subhanallah, how are you gifted to know? Are we all together, brothers? And this might then become an evil eye for you. These are the 10 points that I wanted to mention. Ala ujala, sari'ah. There were other points that I chose to leave off in this lecture. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we did those nine points. I'm going to now move on to the 10th point, which is su'al and jawab, question and answers, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.